What's up, everybody? Doc Dark 1985. There's levels to this. All right, guys, check this out, man. Are non gamers ruining gaming? <laughs> I have heard this for, I don't know, probably two years now. Every, every, ever since I started making my YouTube videos and stuff, people have, you know, accused me of not being a real gamer, not being a hardcore gamer, not being a hardcore sweater knitter. Like, there's there's levels to the level of gaming, having low XP, uh, having low trophy levels, having low achievements, you don't really game, like all kinds of stuff. So there's 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 a there's a crowd out there that believes that people like me are ruining gaming because our opinions are coming from an ignorant place right now i don't get offended by the word ignorant because yes ignorant sounds bad it basically just means that you don't know you don't know what you don't know you're ignorant in that subject when i started hyping up xbox and and game pass and the xbox series x and even the reason why i got the xbox series x came from an ignorant standpoint However, the Xbox Series X and Game Pass have not disappointed me. Now, because I'm not a quote-unquote gamer, I'm not a hardcore sweater knitter, I'm not a trophy hunter, an achievement hunter, none of that stuff, there's a lot of games that I look at on Game Pass and on PS Plus as well um, extra more than premium I don't really look at the classic catalog but I do have premium that I haven't played and I see I see the value in it I see the value in it so when I see the value in it and I promote that and other people see the value and they promote that to the hardcore gamers and I hate doing that because there is no true measurement as to what uh, as to who's considered a gamer there really isn't but when I'm promoting something it gets invalidated by my accolades in gaming. But am I actually ruining gaming? Or is it possible that what I'm promoting is bringing more people into gaming? Hmm. It's promoting something like cloud gaming, bringing more people into gaming that probably wouldn't have gamed anyways. Hmm. Is it possible... That those of us that have an old school mentality are really the ones that are ruining gaming. Mm. Is it possible that those of us that are resistant to the change are the ones that are slowing everything down? Mm. Mm. I don't want to be accused of ruining gaming. Because I like to game. I like to play video games. I wish I had more time to play video games. And this is probably the one time in my life, besides me being a child, where I've had a lot of time to game. And I'm, I'm taking advantage of it. But even now, I still wish I had more time to game. Like, I actually do enjoy playing video games. It's a nice little escape. But if I don't play as much as you, or I don't have my, the same history that you have, how valid is my voice and how much damage or, or how much help am I doing to the community of gaming? I truly wonder. I truly wonder. I try to get on here and I do these videos and I try to speak from my experience as limited as it may be. It's coming from my experience. So when I tell you I'm enjoying something, I'm not lying. I'm telling you I'm enjoying something. And when I tell you I'm not enjoying something... I'm telling you, I don't, I don't enjoy it. So, like, for instance, when I criticize Starfield for me not knowing what it is and I'm not excited about it, I know that I'm speaking from a place of ignorance because I don't really play Bethesda games like that. So when people were like, oh, think about Starfield and space and Skyrim, I haven't played those games. So I have nothing to base it. I'm just looking at whatever they've shown me so far and it doesn't excite me. Even the newest game reveal doesn't excite me. 
So I'm okay with that game being delayed. Does that mean I'm ruining gaming though because I'm not excited about this because I'm basing it off of my experience? It's a very interesting concept. Because then some of us that are on this side that are open to try new things, that are open to try subscription services, that are open to try cloud gaming, we can look at some of you guys that are resistant to all of this and we could say, no, you're ruining gaming. You're ruining gaming by allowing these companies to tell you that if a game goes to a subscription service, out of nowhere, they can't make it high quality. Like these subscription services aren't competing against each other. Competition is still there, guys. It's just on a different platform. But the competition is still there. I would argue now, because of... Mm, that's going to be another video. But I'll give you a snippet. I would argue that because of subscription services, some of these game developers have to make better games. Because their games might get beat out by an indie game that you would have never bought. Mm. Maybe we're just ruining gaming. It's not my intent. I promise you. Yes, there's plenty of people out there that have more gaming accolades, that have gamed way more than a lot of us. And for whatever reason, their voice is not is not as loud. I don't know what the intangible is. Um, but all I can tell you is, I promise you, my intent is not to ruin gaming. I see the value in subscription services. And I do see the value in cloud gaming. I really do. I can't lie to you. As of right now, though, I got both my PS5 and I got my Xbox Series X. And the way I'm enjoying both consoles is subscription services. Sony has forced me to spend money. It was very difficult for me to play Spider-Man at 30 frames on a PS5 when I know they have the remastered version. And Sony could have dropped that game into subscription service. They could have. It's not a new game. It's not day and date. But they didn't. So I paid the $20 to upgrade. I did. We'll see if it's worth it. That's ruining gaming, though. If I would have wanted Spider-Man remastered on that subscription service. I don't know. Dog Dog 1 on 8-5. There's levels to this. We out. Peace.